Here's a picture of George Washington. I don't know if it's from the cover of this book or what, but this is the picture of George Washington laying the cornerstone of the Capitol building in a Masonic ritual. It, it was very interesting. It also had to do with the constellational alignment as well as uh, the degree that they angled the cornerstone in. Now here's the Baphomet seal. Now Baphomet's known for doing the as above, so below pose, which we'll get to in a minute. Anyway, these are allegedly Hebrew letters, according to my research, which stand for Leviathan. This is also known as the Goat of Mendes, Satan's seal. As you can see in the Satanic Bible from Anton Sazandor Levey, it's the exact same thing. And what's interesting about him is he said, remember that these are all Roman gods and goddesses now. The Roman god Lucifer was the bearer of light, the spirit of the air, the personification of enlightenment. I found that a little interesting. We're going to get to some Albert Pike quotes where he talks about Lucifer being the light bearer and Masons deceiving the truth from their lower level initiates. So there's a lot to this conspiracy, people. Now here we have the Bath Met in Washington doing as above, so below. We're uh, going to condense. You see we got a pentacle, the five-pointed star on his forehead. There's a really deep meaning to this. It's really pagan, and but I don't have time to discuss all the symbology here. Anyway, you'll see he's pointing as above to a, uh, a good white moon, and then below to a black moon. You can see he has breasts, and that he's masculine and feminine. One arm, we can't really tell, but one arm's masculine, one's feminine. You can see these dual intertwined snakes, which are the logo of the World Health Organization. That's also got a deeper meaning. Now here's Washington. As you can see, it's kind of disguised with the sword in his hand, but I mean, it's quite obvious once you research Washington's history and know he's a Mason and what as above, so below really means. Now here's some Masonic lodges I found through a couple. And as you can see, there's the G and there's the Baphomet star, the pentacle they use, and when you invert it, that's when it becomes satanic. And that's when it's used for, you know, ancient evil rituals, I think, according to Satanism. So, there is some proof that that could be photoshopped, I don't know, but it looks like a, that is actually, if it wasn't inverted, it would actually be a pagan Wiccan symbol for earth, air, spirit, and fire, and uh, spirit, you know. And here we got another one. This one is supposedly Baphomet. It's really hard to see because it's black ink and, you know, but like I said, these could be photoshopped. Maybe that's it. Let's try and angle the light. Yeah, I don't know if you can quite see it or not, but that one actually is Baphomet. And I doubt most of these Masons, these are, most, most Masons are good. It is a regular fraternity, so... Most Masons probably have no idea what's even going on, like I'll show you from Albert Pike here in a minute. Speaking of that, since we're on to the next source of visual aids, let's get to Albert Pike. go to the Illuminati now because Pike's going to come up later. Anyway, the Bavarian, the Bavarian Illuminati was a real secret society founded in 1776 by Adam Weishaupt, a German Freemason. Allegedly in cahoots with George Washington, this intellectual was a professor at the University of Ingolstadt. Now, Time Magazine says, like the Rosicrucians who preceded them on the world stage, the Illuminati began as a self-selected group of intellectuals seeking to free themselves from the age-old change of church and state. Now, what's really interesting is they're trying to paint the Illuminati as good, which is quite interesting because they're saying that the church is the one who is lying to everybody and that they're the good guys, and we're going to further investigate that. That's why we got the Da Vinci Code. That's a very interesting book when you go back and look at it from a, a Masonic and Illuminati point of view. Because this is stating that Leonardo da Vinci and all of them knew that they're saying that Jesus was human and that he had a wife in Mary Magdalene and that he had a royal bloodline and that it continued on earth and that that bloodline would threaten the power of the Vatican. Interesting storyline indeed. So, anyway, let's get on with this Bavarian Illuminati. 
Anyway, they all adopt the all seeing eye adopted from Egyptian mythology, the urge to rest control rest order from chaos, and the search for an enlightened new world order continue to percolate through Europe and the US. John Arthur Robeson in his book Proofs of Conspiracy wrote the following uh, blah blah blah, and schisms in the Christian church, I saw that the Jesuits had several times interfered in it. The Order of Loyola, I believe that has to do with the Priory of Sion, was suppressed but helped to maintain their influence through the help of Freemasonry. Now what's interesting about his book, I really want to finish reading this, is it was published in the same time, a few years after the Illuminati was formed, in 1776. This was published, I think, in 1789. So they're saying that a conspiracy against the church and government was going on since the foundation of the Illuminati. Interesting, no? Now... The Bavarian Illuminati were ordered to disband after a courier carrying secret Illuminati doctrines was struck dead by lightning. Was it an act of God? Perhaps. Did Wyshop carry out his influence by infiltrating the lodges of Freemasonry in the newly founded 13 colonies? That's also a theory, because, um, you know, maybe our founding fathers weren't in cahoots, and they just simply were infiltrated by the supposedly in, in illuminated ones. Did George Washington worship the devil and Lucifer and have Alistair Crowley-style sex magic rituals? Uh, I don't know. Like I said, all I know is Ma Washington was a highly prominent Freemason, and he definitely lit did a lot of stuff according to uh, astrology and things of that sort. So let's see what else we got going on here. Now, did the Roman Empire never die? Were our founding fathers implementing worship of pagan Roman gods into Christianity? Are we all slaves to the god of the Roman Empire, Lucifer the Lightbearer? I already showed you that quote from the Satanic Bible. Now, I want you, what I want you to think about is how all our planets are named after Roman gods and goddesses. Venus, the goddess of love. Mars, the god of war. Pluto, uh, the guardian of hell. Uh, now, what's also interesting is Pluto's moon is called Charon, and Charon is the ferryman who carts you across the river Styx in Greek mythology into hell. In isn't that interesting? Now, I admit this sounds utterly preposterous, but let's review these simple facts. Like I was saying, most of it, all of our planets are named after planets, and the majority of our founding fathers were Freemasons. Our planets are named after Roman gods. So our days of the week, but I didn't want to incorporate that. Anyway, here's where I'm talking about the Roman god Lucifer. Alright, let's get back to Manly P. Hall. The same book. When the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of the craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply energy. Let me see if I can get that quote up real quick. I got it marked, so... There we go. Here we go. It's from The Lost Keys of Freemasonry. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, so as you can see, I'm not making this stuff up. This is in actual Masonic texts. Now, let's get to some of the Albert Pike quotes, quotes about Lucifer. Albert Pike, a 33rd degree Freemason, in his book Morals and Dogma, writes, And works of Lucifer, Lucifer the Lightbearer, strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness, Lucifer... The son of the morning, is it he who bears the light? Doubt it not. Let's check the page. Page 321 in Albert Pike, Morals and Dogma. As you can see, Morals and Dogma of the Ancient Scottish Rite. Here's a portrait of Albert Pike. There's his dual-headed phoenix eagle. Here's the Grand Commander. This was prepared for the Supreme Council of the 33rd Degree in actually Washington, D.C., so this is a good one. As you can see here, the Supreme Council, Mother Council of the World, Manly P. Hall talks about that. We're going to get to that too. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's talk, let's get to page 321 now.
There we go. Works of Lucifer. Lucifer the light bearer. Strange and mysterious name. Lucifer the son of the morning. So as you can see, he really does talk about this stuff. And, um... Let's see where he talks about some more stuff. Pike also talks about how the true hidden secrets of masonry are kept from the lower ranks. He says that masonry, like all religions, all the mysteries, conceal its secrets from all except the adepts and sages or the elect and use false explanations and misinterpretations of symbols to mislead those who deserve to be misled, to conceal the truth which it calls light from them. That's on page 105. Let's check that out. Just so you can see that he does say this stuff. Alright. What else does he got to say? Well, on page 819, he also talks about mystical, a mystical energy force known to the ancients. There is, no, there is in nature one most potent force. This force was known to the ancients on page 734. He talks about, though masonry is identical with the ancient mysteries, it is so in this qualified sense that it presents but an imperfect image of their brilliancy. And even Pike can recognize the geniusness of the ancient Egyptians. But does that mean they worship, worship Lucifer? Ah, uh, it sure looks like it to me. Now, it seems like they fell for the age-old lie of the devil that knowledge makes them a god. And obviously... Through the way they speak, they feel entitled. Here's something I wanted to show you in Time Magazine. They're special on secret societies. We're going to skip to page 16 and 17. And it's, uh, here's George Washington laying the cornerstone in the Freemason ritual. So you can see that we're not, I'm not, no, we're not making this stuff up, you know. Here's where they're talking about Washington and uh, Franklin Guyton Voltaire through the mysteries. Now this magazine is really interesting. Uh, the only problem is at the very end they go into a whole spiel about how great Dan Brown's novels were about the Mona Lisa and whatnot. The all-seeing eye adapted from Egyptian mythology and that's where they're talking about the New World Order and that's Adam Weiss up there. So, that's actually the emblem of the Priory of Sion. This is actually supposed to be a mythological secret society, but there's the Da Vinci Code. I, like I was saying, they turned this into a, a whole thing about Dan Brown. Here's something interesting. It's a pentacle. I think it's a tarot card. I don't know which one, but it's, it is a pentacle and the Star of David, the Seal of Solomon, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, let's get back to some more visual aids about if there's any uh, influence of Masonic symbolism in our society. Well, quite a bit. Here's an old Nickelodeon, uh, what do you call it, I don't know, an introduction theme. That's an allegedly a bolt of Satan. I guess Satanists use it, but further research needs to be done. That is obviously the Eye of Ra inverted into the dollar bill. Just like that one there. And uh, here's a show. I don't know what this one is. I guess it's the one with the two little rich boys. And it says something about the Illuminati Club. You can't quite read it. The Illuminati something. Here's a Donald Duck cartoon I like. If you look in the background of it, you'll see Ask About Illuminati. It's crazy, man. I'm telling you, some of this stuff is really interesting. There's a Goofy cartoon. I think that's the Goofy movie with the Eye of Ra. Allegedly, Walt Disney. Walt Disney was a 33rd degree Freemason. And uh, apparently he's got 666 in his name. The way he signs it, I guess. That could be valid. Now, here's the commercial for Beats. A still a Beats 666 displayed on your screen. I mean, if you look for these things, they're there.